I'm Lauren Miller, Development Associate for Membership and Volunteers at the Olana Partnership. Before we get started, I just want to give a special thanks to our members that are participating in tonight's webinar. We really appreciate your continuous support. Membership is a vital part of the Olana Partnership. It is because of generous contributors like you that we can make programs like this webinar possible. Members also receive free guided historic landscape, main house, and exhibition tours. Please don't hesitate to call me if you have questions. You can become a member by visiting olana.org slash membership for more information. Please keep an eye on our website, alana.org, for more upcoming programs this year. Also, please mark your calendars for the opening of Terraforming, Olana's historic photography collection unearthed, opening May 14th. Members will be invited to a special preview on May 13th, and details will follow. On a final note, Alana is looking for volunteers. If you love landscape, art, history, and Frederick Church's Alana, this is the perfect way to give back and get involved in our community. To learn more, please contact me. Now, before we start, a few notes on Zoom. As an attendee, your sound and video will remain off throughout this webinar. Please use the Q&A function to ask questions of our speaker. You're welcome to ask questions throughout the webinar, but we will not answer them until the final portion of the program. For a question, you can move your speaker's image during the talk if the image is covering the PowerPoint by clicking the black bar above his picture and dragging it. If you are having any issues with your Zoom today, please contact me at lmiller.olana.org. Um, I will also be available for troubleshooting in the chat function. Please join me in welcoming the moderator for tonight, Carolyn Keough, the Olana Partnership's Director of Public Programming and Education, who will be introducing Dr. Harvey Flad, Professor Emeritus of Geography at Vassar College, former chair of the Geography and Earth Sciences Department, and founding member of the American Studies, Environmental Studies, and Urban Studies Program. Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, I'm so excited to welcome Harvey. Um, Harvey K. Flad is Professor Emeritus of Geography at Vassar College, former chair of the Geography and Earth Sciences Department and founding member of the American Studies, Environmental Studies and Urban Studies programs. Dr. Flad's scholarship has focused on cultural and historical landscapes and environmental and urban planning. He has published numerous articles on 19th century landscape design, theory, and practice, including the influence of the Hudson River School of Art and the work of Andrew Jackson Downing. His legal testimonies on the visual and aesthetic impact of a proposed nuclear power plant in 1979 and a massive cement plant in 2005 were instrumental in preserving the views from Olana. We're so grateful to Dr. Flad for all that he's done for the preservation of Olana and its view shed. Most recently, Harvey donated his papers to Olana's archives and the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation so that future researcher, re, researchers excuse me, will have access to this important resource. Please join me in welcoming Harvey Flad. Harvey, thank you for joining us to share your scholarship, your work, and your legacy with us tonight. We're so excited for this presentation um, and just eager to learn more about your experience with this important work. So please hop on and and Join us when when you're when you're ready. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that's a wonderful introduction, uh, Carolyn, and uh, also thanks to everyone else at, at the Olana Partnership that's uh, been working on doing the, the good work for keeping Olana uh, up and running and the viewscapes cleared out so we can see what. Frederick Church really did have in mind when he created his landscape as well. In the 1960s, a proposal for a hydroelectric pump storage facility on Storm King Mountain on the banks of the Hudson River was denied on its potential environmental impact on the river and its aesthetic impact on the landscape. The project's denial led to the National Environmental Policy Act, ANIPA in 1969, under which all subsequent federal environmental legislation would be framed and all development projects, which include federal funding, must consider their potential environmental impacts. 
States soon followed and created similar regulations. New York State enacted the State Environmental Quality Review Act, SEEKER, that has required an assessment of potential impacts on both the physical environment as well as, which is air, water, soil, et cetera, and such, as well as the social environment, such as population and transportation. Visual impact assessment was added later that includes both the aesthetic landscape and more comprehensively, the cultural landscape, which is what I engage in. This has become the basis for defining community character. In a decision in 2018, for example, uh, DEC Commissioner Basil Siegel declared that community character relates, quote, not only to the built and natural environments of a community, but also to how people function within and perceive the community. And we'll talk more about that. In the late 1970s, a local opposition to a potential visual impact of a proposed nuclear power plant within the viewshed of the New York State historic site, Olana, can be considered to be the legal case where the significance of visual impact assessment became central to assessment of potential changes to natural and cultural landscapes. Olana's landscape, and specifically the views of and from Olana, occupy a formative place in the development of historic and environmental preservation in America. Both efforts to pre preserve the historic and cultural landscape and conservation of the natural environment had their origins here in the Hudson Valley, and both combined in the late 1970s to save the historic site of Frederick Church's home and studio, its landscape and viewscape. It is a story that interweaves art, history, aesthetics, perception, citizen engagement, and environmental law. Uh, uh, please change. Uh, uh, Thomas Cole, considered the founder of the Hudson River School of Art, was also an essayist and an early advocate of conservation. In his essay on American scenery, Cole not only presented the natural elements that are essential for a landscape painting, such as forests, water, walls, sky, and so forth, and the emotions they symbolize. He also argued that the dialectic between the American wilderness and the cultivated landscape was being challenged by what were called improvements, such that, quote, the sublimity of the wilderness should pass away, he said. He lamented that the ravages of the axe are daily increasing. The most noble scenes are made desolate and oftentimes with a wantonness and a barbarian scarcely credited in a civilized nation. Good old 19th century conversation there. Cole admonished the emerging middle classes to develop a conservation ethic. Quote, it would be well to cultivate the oasis that yet remains to us and thus preserve the germs of a future and pure system. And in their search for the nature's sublime, many Hudson River School artists traveled up the Hudson and west to Niagara Falls. Uh, the next slide, please. And visited the falls and um, for that. Uh, many of his followers made the, their early reputation as such as Frederick Church, Cole's only student in 1857. The falls on its immediate area, however, became overrun with tourists hotels and facilities for their amusement, as well as projects that harness the energy for industrial purposes, that New York State established a park to preserve the scenic views. In an 1879 letter supporting the preservation of the falls and surrounding landscape, Frederick Law Olmsted declared, quote, my attention was first called to the rapidly approaching ruin of the characteristic scenery by Mr. F. E. Church about 10 years ago. <clears throat> Subsequently, Olmsted and Calvert Fox, who had already established the new discipline of landscape architecture in creating public parks by their design for New York City's Central Park, were engaged to develop the plans for the Niagara Reservation. And through efforts in 1883 days, it was the beginning of scenic preservation in New York State. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Search's success with 
Niagara Falls enabled him to purchase property on the east bank of the Hudson, just south of the city of Hudson and across the river from his mentor, Thomas Cole's home and studio, Cedar Grove in Casco. He and his wife built their house and studio art studio on the hill, a promontory with scenic views west and north of the Catskill Mountains and south with a bend in the river flowing towards the horizon. Throughout his life, Church would play, paint <clears throat> dozens and dozens of these views of the, <clears throat> the overarching sky of towering clouds and brilliant sunsets. In the mid 1960s, art historian David Hunt wrote his PhD dissertation <clears throat> and then rather and then rather little known artist Frederick Edward Church. In his visits to Olana, Huntington became concerned by its fate as an architectural gem and cultural landmark <clears throat> with its furnishings and interior and exterior designs was in jeopardy. Excuse me, bless. <clears throat> Huntington and a small group of dedicated art lovers gathered the financial and political resources and the editorial efforts of newspapers and magazines, such as the New York Times, Life Magazine, to persuade New York State <clears throat> to purchase the site as a his state historic site. Park. It is a thrilling story, masterfully told by my friend and colleague, David Schuyler, who many of, of you know. It is one of the most magnificent stories, significant stories of the role of the preservation of an historic site. And as Schuyler quotes Huntington, quote, the preservation of Olana has been an achievement of the American community, unquote. <clears throat> Church's paintings of scenic views from Olana would later become central to environmental preservation, as well as through the analysis of the visual impact of developments on the features of his cultural landscape. Next, next slide, please. The birth of the modern American environmental movement may be placed in the Storm King legal case seen at Hudson Preservation Conference versus <clears throat> Federal Power Com Commission and Consolidated Edison Company of New York. In the early 1960s, Con Ed proposed to build the world's largest hydroelectric pump storage facility on the top of Storm King Mountain. The Environmental Preservation Group, Scenic Hudson, was formed in 1963 to contest Con Ed's plans. Their members viewed the proposed power plant as a major industrial defilement of one of Hudson Valley's most visible natural features and as an attack on the nation's cultural identity. Next slide, please. Two key rulings by the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit in 1965 allowed Scenic Hudson to continue its opposition to the construction of the power plant, the delays eventually wore down Con Ed and led to the defeat of the proposal. The decision expanded the role of the courts in environmental and land use law by addressing the role of aesthetics. Testimony by professor of architecture history, Vincent Scully was very important and eloquent and effective according to the counsel for the plaintiffs, David Syme, and persuaded the court that the, quote, the aesthetic qualities of Storm King were so great that any diminishing of these qualities would leave society without these values, unquote. Two of the court's rulings would further strengthen environmental law. One, the court held that environmental concern extended to natural and scenic beauty and the historical fabric, not only to the economic cost of a project. And secondly, the court also held that citizen groups had the legal right or standing, even if they did not have any direct economic interest to challenge the potential environmental impacts of a proposed construction and that alternatives must be presented. These features were then incorporated into the nation's most important environmental legislation, the National Environmental Policy Act of, or NEPA of 1969. They, the statute directly led to states developing their own little NEPAs, such as New York State's State Environmental Quality Review Act or SEEKER. Next slide, please. 
The Storm King precedents became significant in a subsequent major battle over a proposed electric power plant in the Hudson River Valley. A nuclear power plant was proposed in the late 1970s in Greene County on the west banks of the Hudson within the viewshed of Olana. The historic home and studio of Hudson River uh, school painter for French church. The name Olana evoked the eclectic multicolored Persian style design of the building that recalled architectural designs that Church and his wife had seen during their travels in the Near East. From atop Church's Hill, south of Hudson, Church could see his mentor's home and studio Cedar Grove across the Hudson River to Caskill and views down river, down south towards uh, uh, toward south towards the river. Views from Olana became a significant factor in opposition to the proposed nuclear power plant. Next slide, please. A citizens coalition joined together to challenge the Green County power plant proposed by the utilities, <clears throat> the New York State Power Authority or PASNI and New York regula US Regulatory Commission, NRC. As in the Storm King hearing, information was presented on the potential environmental impact of the 1200 megawatt facility on the river ecology and the atmosphere, and with the consideration of the immense projected costs of over $3 billion and the economic need for the plan. However, the crucial and ultimately uh, compelling testimony focused on the aesthetic and visual impact of the 450 foot cooling towers and the associated steam plumes on the cultural and historic landscape. The Citizens Commission consisted of Columbia County Historical Society, Friends of Atlanta, Greene County, the Town and Village of Catskill, the Town and Village of Athens, the Hudson River Conservation Society, Hudson River Sloop, Clearwater. Lead counsel was environmental lawyer Robert C. Stover of the New York City firm Norwich, Raggio, Jaffe, and Kayser. The coalition combined the interests of historic preservation <clears throat> and the environmental conservation on the visual impacts of the proposed on Olana and the scenic views from Olana. <clears throat> Next slide, please. As in the arguments to stop the construction of the Con Ed power plant <clears throat> on the face of Storm King, the concern for the visual impact of the proposed Green County nuclear power plant was a crucial element of the coalition's opposition. For example, comments by Jay Winthrop Aldrich and the Hudson River Conservation Society argued that the, depart the <clears throat> draft environmental impact statement, DEIS, did not adequately assess the visual impact of the view from Atlanta <clears throat> of the proposal. A, a preferred site located at Cementon on the west bank of the Hudson, six miles downriver. Loretta Simon also questioned the impact on the village of Athens by the alternate site just west of the village. And over the course of the review by the DEIS, by the many in interveners, visual impact emerged as pivotal both to preserving Olana's scenic views, <clears throat> as well as to the development of visual impact analysis in itself, according to Richard Rick Bennis of New York State and DEC. And this is, uh, is how he uh, put a lot of that together as, as what is visual impact and aesthetic impact uh, by, uh, by Bennis in 2005, looking at these, uh, the project and how it emerged and it evolved. <clears throat> Two parallel approaches were created to analyze the visual impact evidence from Church's studio and other publicly accessible vantage points and contextual analysis of the aesthetic, historical, and cultural landscape. Two different approaches. According to NEPA, the federal government is mandated to preserve important historic, cultural, and natural aspects of our national heritage. For the latter, several art historians offered perspectives on the importance of the Hudson Valley's scenic beauty and the need to preserve both architectural landmarks and the valley's scenic views. For example, testimony opposing the proposal, art historian David Huntington <clears throat> noted the significance of Olana and Church's artistic vision, while Barbara Novak ar agreed uh, or argued 
that the natural and cultural landscape encompassed by views from Olana were nationally significant. As she said, the cement in Athens area is the heart of American 19th century culture. One area of landscape that the nation as a whole and the federal government specifically should designate as a national landmark. Visual impact analysis of this cultural landscape, however, required detailed both objective and subjective observations of the proposed sites and structures. Two studies developed methodologies that integrated views of the proposed power plant and the aesthetic landscape. One, the federal government engaged Oak Ridge Laboratories to review the DEIS for the visual impact assessment. Landscape architect Carl Petrick developed a computer image of the cement site and surveyed public response. As he has said, he had the technology and resources of a well-financed scientific lab. Meanwhile, Robert Stover, counsel for the Local Citizens Co Coalition, uh, engaged me as a geographer who integrated social history and perception of the environment into studies of the cultural landscape. Stover was a neighbor of mine in Poughkeepsie, as I taught at Vassar College and knew that I had just finished a study of light in New York State and had submitted that report to the state's Council of Environmental Advisors that had received a, a strong editorial endorsement by the New York Times. He invited me to offer testimony on the visual impact of the Green County Nuclear Power Plant in Alana. The resulting submission included images of the plant, cooling tower and plume at both Cementon and Athens proposals from a variety of locations and a detailed social and architectural history of the region within the viewscape of Olena. The study emphasized the community's perception of and attitudes towards their landscape. The original approach to visual impact would evolve into a more comprehensive analysis of community power. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. Views of the proposals became the most obvious and forceful argument about the impact of the cooling towers and the associated blooms. Cement is easily seen in a view south southwest from the porch at Olana. The proposal, the proposed site for the nuclear power plant was at Cement on the west bank of the Hudson, six miles down the river. You can sort of see it right, right, right from the porch. I took this photograph straight down. Uh, down. In testimony of opposition to the construction of the plant, drawings, including a computer mock-up, clearly showed that the cooling towers and associated plumes would be visible from Olana. Uh, next slide, please. Both the size of the plant and the height of the tower along the extended length of the smoke and steam were clearly visible in views from Olana. Here we, we see cement in the primary site. It's a huge tower. and the massive tower and the six mile steam plume extended above the ridge line of the Shawanga to the south and the Catskills to the southwest. They became focal points of the view from Thurtz's studio. Written and oral testimony by nationally renowned artists such as Alan Gussow and art historians such as Daniel Huntington concluded that such an industrial intrusion on the cultural and natural landscape would severely diminish the emotional power, that is aesthetic, not simply visual visibility of the scene. Church's paintings that focused on that immediate viewscape of the view southwest from Atlanta, such as this one, Hudson Valley and Winter, uh, were particularly effective. Uh, next slide, please. And this is the most important of those many 35 or, or so paintings, which is a uh, winter scene, I call it. And you just look directly from his studio all the way down uh, uh, and you can uh, to the cement and site. It was very clear. I vividly recall uh, encountering winter scene painting during one of my field trips to Atlanta as I made my way to the porch and studio. It was one of those moments, you know, uh, and I, I took a second look to confirm my initial reaction, the use of the painting's image and the arguments focused on visual impact 
would become, according to Wynne Aldrich, the nail that closed the coffin. Or he said something like that. <laughs> Wynne was very important in that. Next slide, please. Winter scene and over a dozen other sketches and paintings of the same view were essential to recognize a less specific focal point of cement and a proposed plan and its immense power and plumes. Kirch also designed his property in the picturesque style of Olmsted and Vaux to enhance <coughs> Olana's viewscapes. Kirch is, uh, and, and at the bottom of, of this plan, which is the landscape plan of 1880s, I have made is Church's comment in 1864. Quote, I have made about one and three quarters miles of roads this season, opening new and beautiful views. I can make more and better landscapes in this way than through my, any tampering with canvas and paint, unquote. And so the, the power of landscape and the viewscape to, uh, to an artist in this case. And meanwhile, the examination of visual impact on the cultural landscape included dozens of examples from within a 20 mile circumference of Atlanta, from a number of field trips to the local countryside and with great assistance of Columbia County historian, Ruth Pawanka, Green County planner, Loretta Simon and Wynn Aldrich, a cultural landscape emerged that virtually and visually presented a sense of place for its inhabitants where farms, fields, vernacular and historic architecture, landscape architecture, early town planning and concern for scenic views combined to form a sense of place where history and perception created community character. Views from the city of Hudson, New York were also significant as examples of aesthetic impact on a cultural landscape. Next slide, please such as the historic parade ground on the bluff overlooking <clears throat> uh, the uh, Hudson River in the foreground, the village of Athens in the middle ground, and the Catskills in the background. The parade ground had been uh, sited during the settlement of Hudson in 1790 for its scenic view as one of the first urban design features to incorporate an appreciation of, prospect of a prospect view from the city's core in America. A mock-up of a view of the cooling tower located west of the village indicated that its immense scale would have completely dominated the village's 19th century architecture and streetscape. Next, uh, uh, yeah. In an examination of the full impact of the proposal on the region's scenic quality, especially as viewed from Milan, the NRC concluded <clears throat> from the total perspective of the analysis of what is there to be seen in the stretch of Mid Hudson Valley and how this area might be affected by the construction and operation of the proposed power plant. The Green County nuclear power plant at the Cementon location is seen to be quite disruptive to the existing scenic ambiance. The analysis of the individual photographs from visibly sensitive and intensively used areas points to this conclusion. Uh, the NRC pointed specifically to the paintings and their decision and their scenic views and transferred to canvases. And also uh, it cited the uh, oh, sorry, uh, next, uh, next slide, please. To, uh, to other views from around the, uh, in the 20 mile area that the scene, the cooling tower and plume from historical sites would also impact their historical aesthetic. The NRC denied the license, citing its potential irreversible negative impact on the cultural and historic landscape. And the decision was unprecedented. It, it's that the, it was the first impact statement <laughs> issued by the NRC ever recommending the denial of a license to construct a nuclear power plant. That this recommendation is primarily for aesthetic reasons documents the progress in the credibility and defendability of visual analysis. The methodologies included the introduction of industrial images, such as cooling towers and smoke rooms, to photographs of the same views as, as painted by 
church. The decision by the NRC was a significant test for the role of the visual impact of potential development and soon led New York State to add visual impact analysis as a separate part of environmental impact analysis, as we saw in the uh, Rick Menes uh, state. Next, uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so on this slide from Cena Hudson, you can see from Olana in the center of the slide uh, to the to the southwest is where the Green County nuclear power plant was proposed. To the northwest, where the, the Athens secondary site was proposed, and then to the northeast. And to the east and northeast, where the St. Lawrence cement plant was to be uh, built. Views from Olana were instrumental in another equally significant case that has important roles for aesthetics, community character, and the cultural landscape. In 1999, St. Lawrence cement uh, company, a subsidiary of the Swiss owned Holcomb group applied to the New York State Department of Environmental Cons Conservation for permits to construct a new 2.6 million ton dry process cement manufacturing facility on its property in the town of Greenport in the city of Hudson. The quarry and proposed plant would lie in the Olana Viewshed, north towards Hudson and the, and, uh, the Beat Fresh Hills. Next slide, please. Opponents analyze the environmental and social impacts of the proposal as a result of the enormous scale of the plant is stacked in associated plume and docking and loading facilities. If you take a look at this, at this slide very carefully in, in, in the uh, center to the uh, left, really, uh, you can see just uh, up, uh, take that cursor, if you will, and bring it up right to the plant. Right? There's the plant and the plume. You can see the plume going for a couple of miles out that way. So this is from Cozy Cottage, uh, right on, uh, uh, which was uh, Frederick and, <clears throat> and so his wife's uh, first uh, home, actually, on, on, uh, on the hill before they had built uh, uh, Olana. Very important view, very important view. <clears throat> Environment impacts on the Hudson River were of special concern as most municipalities had recently developed plans for their waterfronts by enacting local waterfront revitalization plans, LWRPs, under the aegis of the Department of State. Developments along the Hudson shoreline would have to be consistent with the policies enacted by the local LWRP and uh, yeah, uh, the economic, what else do we talk about that? Yes, okay. Uh, and uh, to uh, the LWRP municipality's economic development plan. Seen a, a cultural landscape approach to uh, these issues included also paintings by Church and others uh, of the Hudson uh, shoreline, the next slide, please. Uh, where the uh, cement plant would have its uh, cement put down into barges. This is by Thomas Cole from his house of Point Marino, uh, of Marino, uh, Mount Marino, we call it. Next slide, please. And this is by uh, Thomas Fire. Uh, from also from Thomas Cole's farm. And you can see right in the middle of the slide, uh, if you, uh, you can put the cursor right in the center, of, right there, that is Hudson uh, and where the cement plant would have been built. Next slide, please. In this, uh, uh, in this slide is uh, a photo simulation of its proposed waterfront facilities for loading and unloading a cement plant. And the plume is highly visible in the center of the Slide and just on the uh, and and the waterfront to the left, as you see along there, where the barges would come and so forth, uh, uh, would hide all of Hudson and um, the waterfront. And the waterfront at that point 
was considered by Hudson to be uh, um, of important recreational and, and tourism importance uh, as, uh, by their LWRP. Many less, uh, so in both paintings from the property of the founder of the Hudson River School were significant in an examination of the visual impact of the proposed plant and its associated docking facilities. They documented both aesthetic and historic scenic view. This photo simulation is a powerful analysis of the proposed development on the Hudson shoreline. In 2005, Secretary of State for New York, Randy Daniels <clears throat> denied, denied the application of St. Lawrence cement to construct the plant and the docking facilities as proposed. His ruling incorporated opponents' concern about potential adverse impacts on the local economy and river ecology, as well as the historic cultural and aesthetic landscape and its community character. For example, Daniels wrote, quote, the Hudson River viewshed in this area is important. The Hudson Valley was the setting for the Hudson River School of Artists and the geographic center of the American Romantic moment, movement, sorry, a cultural movement that took place during the first half of the 19th century. That's, that's Daniels. Referring to riverfront park development efforts by both the village of Athens and the city of Hudson, Daniels noted, quote, the region is also a significant resource of tourism and recreation, unquote. In addition, he specifically noted the discordant features of the massive plant and plume that would severely disrupt views from Olana. <clears throat> so he is using both the economic issue, the heritage issue, and the Olana's uh, aesthetic view in his decision to deny. The opinion noted that the region was entering a post-industrial economy of growth focused on heritage tourism and air and air, what document character and landscape aesthetics were significant resources. St. Lawrence Cement subsequently dropped its plans. Next slide, please. And here that is a, a sunset view by church to indicate the, you know, the, the sun setting of, on the development plans so much as a result of viewscapes. Next slide, please. In 2015, a decade after the decision by Secretary Daniels to deny the St. Lawrence cement plant proposal on the grounds of its impact on the economy and post-industrial landscape, of heritage tourism, I was engaged by the environmental law firm Earth Justice to assist the citizens group Gas Free Seneca in their opposition to a proposal by Finger Lakes LPG Storage for a permit to store fracked gas for propane in salt caves on the banks of Seneca Lake. And next slide, please. Seneca Lake is one of the Finger Lakes in central New York. It's a glacial lake, deep, cold, central to an environment conducive to growing grapes and making wine. Vineyards and villages compose a scenically beautiful landscape of pastoral beauty that, <coughs> that bolsters a heritage tourism economy. <coughs> the landscape really defined its set the community's sense of place. Next slide, please. A colleague of mine, uh, 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 Susan Christofferson, an economic geographer at Cornell University, documented the economic importance of tourism and winemaking while I explored the region's long history of agriculture, its locally described scenic views and contemporary municipal comprehensive plans that documented the citizens' concerns for preserving a beautiful cultural landscape. It's written in their municipal plans. That is uh, the, the perception of the, of the community that 
beauty, scenic beauty, is important to their own uh, uh, welfare and their own sense of community, a sense of place and community care. The uh, uh, and next slide, please. The community character that was foundational to the region's sense of place <clears throat> was of a pastoral cultural landscape and its economy that would be compromised by that proposal. Next slide, please. DEC Commissioner <clears throat> uh, Bezos denied the permit on the grounds of community character. And if you uh, read this very long uh, slide, I'm sorry, it's uh, usually it's not a, uh, to have it all, but you can see on the first piece, it's where community character, uh, is his statement, quote, not only to the built and natural environment of a community, but also to how people function within and perceive that community, unquote. It's now in the handbook for the seeker, and that's by Beeson. The record demonstrates, he said, that the impacts of the project on the character of the local and regional economy, including but not limited to the environmental setting <clears throat> and sensitivity to the Finger Lakes area and the local and re regional economic engines, which are wine, agriculture, tourism, are significant and adverse and the project does not avoid or minimize these impacts to the maximum extent possible. The proposed facility, he says, uh, with its industrial image, is seen to be in conflict with the local or regional setting and would overlay an indelible industrial impact on the cultural landscape of Seneca Lake. And so he then goes on to say that uh, he will deny the uh, the proposal. Um, those words, those quotes, were taken directly out of our uh, community character testimony. Next slide, please. So, in this slide, we see what visual impact, what visual, what viewscapes are important why they are important to community character, to the landscape as seen and important as an aesthetic landscape, to Alana, yes, to Frederick Church, of course, Thomas Cole as well, but to all of us citizens now in the 21st century, as we look out across the viewshed, which includes the Hudson River, includes the Catskills, and Thomas Cole's house and studio, Cedar Grove. Uh, historic and aesthetic and natural features of our landscape all combine to create the cultural landscape uh, 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 and give, give us all a sense of place in the Hudson Valley. A community characters is written in a cultural landscape. Assessing the visual impact of proposed development on Olana's viewshed 45 years ago led to the preservation of its scenic views and to the comprehensive approach to visual impacts on a community and its sense of place. Community character analysis is now embedded in New York State's seeker for review of proposed developments. Thank you. Thank you so much, Harvey. That was wonderful. And I think, you know, as someone who works at the Alana Partnership and holds Viewshed Preservation near and dear to my heart, it was just a uh, even deeper kind of explanation of why these these this is so important and this Viewshed Preservation is such a vital issue for us to kind of um, keep in keep top of mind. We have some questions that are coming in to the Q&A, so please keep them coming. But I do have a question of my own that I'd love to kind of start us off with. Um, a question that I have, you know, I've always been so struck by the ways in which I, I studied art history. And so I've always been so struck by the ways in which um, church's painting has such a impactful economic, environmental, um, and uh, cultural impact when it's taken up as a piece of evidence in the case as you discussed. But I know that there are, um, you know, current conversations in the region about solar farms and other sources of energy. And I think a question that I have for you is kind of how do we navigate these issues of climate and um, you know environmental uh, concerns in a 21st century 
way with these viewshed concerns and thinking about um, protecting this community character as you've described during your wonderful presentation. Well, thank you for that. And uh, indeed, um, uh, it's a very good question <laughs> um, because uh, it is, <clears throat> it gets to the heart of the issue of, <clears throat> of I was, uh, uh, the future of technology along with the preservation of our history. Mm. And so it's, uh, it's, a very, uh, it's, a, it's a very good question as to how to do that. My answer to many questions of that kind uh, is that it all comes down to design. Uh, I taught land, land use planning and design uh, uh, issues uh, with respect to some of the similar kinds of questions for many years. And that is that uh, you, can, you can build something and it will have a, an, a, an impact that is uh, deleterious to the uh, uh, to those who see it, visual impact, and to the community at large in many ways. And certainly that would be an example of, of the Green County Nuclear Power Plant. Take a look at that. And uh, energy questions uh, of, of that kind. Um, there was uh, uh, there were many design issues that could have been accommodated, um, and were later to be try attempted to do that with various uh, energy kind of uh, uh, facilities. Um, solar panels on the, on the landscape and solar farms and so forth. Again, uh, to one degree, uh, the what seeker requires is that uh, it, to be, to is to minimize the impact of any development is to try to uh, have it um, um, behind vegetation and other uh, ways of uh, eliminating or at least minimizing visual impact and so forth. Um, and uh, the other, the other, uh, another question, of course, is uh, of climate for the Hudson River is what is happening to the shorelines. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, here, um, the uh, uh, what the, the state has in terms of its LWRP are various <coughs> 47, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, approaches <coughs> that have to be met by any community or any developer in terms uh, of minimizing environmental impact on the, uh, on the Hudson River mm -hmm. and uh, on, on the community. In fact, and, and uh, numbers 20 to 23, 24, 27 are all about scenic impact. That is to say, visual impact. Hmm. Views of this development are views from the river of the development and so forth. So uh, I'm very familiar with that being on the Waterfront Advisory Committee <laughs> for the Poughkeepsie. So um, there are ways, there are ways. It doesn't mean that you have to stop uh, development entirely, mm -hmm. but you have to work through uh, uh, this uh, uh, this question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, taking that holistic approach. We have a semi-related question coming in from the Alana Partnerships President, Sean Sawyer. Um, does the federal designation of the Hudson River Valley National Heritage Area provide any specific additional environmental protections? Uh, the answer is uh, uh, somewhat. <laughs> that <laughs> is that uh, as one goes through the uh, seeker process, uh, the more you can uh, align uh, the, the question to historic sites, historic districts, and historic, in this case, the uh, register, it, it, will, it will help. Uh, okay. As a matter of fact, my most recent uh, uh, testimony has been for uh, the town of Saugerties and uh, on the question of what's happening to the lower Esopus 
as a result of the Ashokan Reservoir uh, pouring its mud down, down the Asopus, which goes into the Hudson River and causes a visual impact, to be sure, uh, as well as an environmental impact uh, on Hudson River and, uh, and tourism and other things like that. The fact that uh, I could add in to all of that, the fact that, that, the, that the, the river and the valley and so on is already listed as a heritage, uh, national heritage uh, uh, is very important because it, it raises the question. It's not just any old place that is being where, you know, okay, so we're destroying the, the you know, we're cutting the trees and it's gonna be a different landscape or something, of, you know, mm -hmm. if, if the landscape is a heritage, whatever, you can't, it's not that you can't do it, but Seeker will say, will be regulating what is happening and may in fact deny hmm. that, that possibility. So yes, it's, it's very important. That's great. Another question um, from Sean, you listed municipalities in Greene County as part of the coalition contesting the nuclear plant. Were there any from Columbia County? Uh, uh, yes, of course. I mean, uh, Hudson, <laughs> for example, uh, which uh, we did a lot with. And um, I am trying to resurrect whether Kinderhook and Claverack and so forth were, uh, whether they actually um, wrote, um, uh, did legislation on this. I can't quite remember, but mm -hmm. uh, Ruth Polanco was very helpful in getting all of those <clears throat> villages and communities and, and the unincorporated folks uh, to sign on to some degree, whether officially or not, uh, uh, to uh, help the, the, uh, uh, the, the most, you know, obviously the most important one was the city of Hudson mm -hmm. because, of, because of, and it had that uh, extraordinary uh, historical architecture, which we could uh, detail all along Warren Street and then the parade ground, which as I mentioned, uh, uh, in in my research in urban urban history, uh, in national urban history, um, it seems to be one of the first. So, wow. if, if not the first, it, it's certainly one of the first. Seventeen ninety. That's a very I, wow. The, the settlement. What they defined that in their urban in their town planning. Town planning was not a, uh, you know, was also just very early on, but they were coming from, uh, uh, the settlers were coming from New England where towns and villages did have a plan to some degree, but not exactly the same in this kind of uh, structured plan that Hudson did. But uh, uh, that, that was, I mean, that for a, uh, for a geographer, that was a very exciting to find that information out. <laughs> Another idea for a webinar, something to, to probe, something to look into. Um, we had a question come in via email from the wonderful Alan Wallach, and I, I do wanna make sure that we get to this. Um, have you published this history? Has anyone, it needs to be widely known and remembered by young, younger generations since the copper hearted barbarians as Cole called them are busier than ever plotting the destruction of beautiful and essential US landscapes. Um, so question about where people can learn more, where this history is published. Um, it would be wonderful to have a book or pamphlet, Alan writes, and I you know, can't help but agree. Where can we learn more? Where can we get this resource? Well, there, uh, actually, there are three uh, places uh, that uh, have uh, parts of this story, and you know the core of the story about Green County Nuka Park land, and 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 that uh, to some degree the St. Lawrence land, um, and they are um, one is in uh, the I have them here on my desk, so I'll have to get them. Um, the Environmental History of the Hudson River, uh, edited by Henshaw, which was uh, published by uh, Sony Press. And there I have uh, a, quite a long article uh, on the role of Hudson River School painters, including the, 
uh, the preservation of the uh, Palisades, uh, which is uh, another, uh, again, painted by the, uh, and, and therefore that. A sec and another uh, is the most recent um, article I just published in uh, the Hudson River Valley Review, the most recent uh, autumn issue I just came out. Um, and that, that is a, uh, again, it's a, uh, a, a short uh, sort of tour, if you will, of uh, various uh, citizen actions um, in the Hudson River Valley uh, to preserve cultural uh, sites, historic sites, and, and the cultural landscape. Uh, and one of them, of course, is the you know, Olana story, but it, and a number of other stories by Calvert Box, uh, of Calvert Box's work and so forth. That's as great. Well. And uh, third is, um, as I mentioned uh, in, in my talk, the magnificent book, and this is really a book you really need on your show. You need this book. And that is um, Embattled River by David Schuyler. And uh, David and I, and actually I was the senior um, consultant to <clears throat> a New York Historical Society when they did the Hudson River uh, 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 history uh, uh, a year and a half ago, two years ago. A, a magnificent exhibit. It was huge and, and mar marvelous. And uh, in the bookstore uh, at that time was both David Schuyler's book and, and uh, the environmental history of the Hudson River. Um, so uh, those three, I guess, uh, that, those are ones that I can recommend anyway. And That's great. Uh, I, Highly recommend Skyler. Yeah. And we'll make sure to include, we'll send an email out, you know, following this webinar with some of those resources so people can can investigate and learn a little bit more on their own. Um, yeah. Definitely. We have some other questions coming through. I do want to let folks know that it is seven. You know, we are nearing the hour. So if you have to hop off, feel free. But I do want to make sure that we get to as many questions as possible. Um, one that's come through from one of our own, um, the Alana Partnership staff members, Hannah, thanks for chiming in, is a question that I think relates to a little bit of what you and I have kind of talked about this notion of community character and cultural landscape landscape preservation. And um, I'm going to try to encapsulate both of your questions, Hannah, in, into one, if that's okay with you. So I think looking ahead to, um, you know, some other upcoming programs and conversations that we've had at Olana um, related to the Indigenous history and other histories of this landscape, has there been any discussion during these legal battles about what the cultural landscape preservation might mean to members of various communities? And I guess another kind of follow up question is how um, can these questions and these notions and dialogues about preservation relate to contemporary conversations about including more diverse and inclusive stories um, in the context of this conversation, I guess? That is an excellent question. And what I would uh, suggest, one thing, first of all, is that a full comprehensive cultural landscape study will, uh, must go back to the earliest inhabitants mm -hmm. Native American folks. In, in the case of the Asopus uh, uh, work that I just did, uh, and also the Finger Lakes one that I mentioned, is that uh, it, it starts with the uh, Lenape and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that, because they changed the landscape, they lived in the landscape and so, so when the English or Dutch, in the case of uh, this area, uh, arrive, they change the landscape too. But what they're mm -hmm. changing is they're changing an already existing, living, changing landscape. Now, so that's that's important for the author of the cultural landscape study, right? And it's imp important then that for the, those who are receiving that to make sure that all uh, the inhabitants, all the citizens, uh, get to, to know that their stories are part of that. Mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, in the, um, I mean, we have so many layers here in our landscape, and it's 
the landscape um, is not just the elite landscape of the estates along the Hudson River Valley and or of the, of the artist studios either uh, or whatever. I mean, it's, 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 uh, for, that's why I ever mentioned the vernacular history and architecture. It, um, up, to, up until that point, um, you know, very little of that was, was involved in visual impact assessment. You know, mm. uh, the visual impact is about, I don't know, these already existing beautiful things. Well, wait a minute, let's put it all together, put the puzzle all together. And um, so, um, uh, you know, that's, it, it, it requires uh, a really uh, an understanding and research uh, to understand the totality. Mm. Because if you're gonna call it uh, a cultural landscape that has meaning to its inhabitants, uh, they many uh, will have different different approaches, or different perceptions. Uh, when you know uh, the perception of this farm may be by an elite observer, maybe that it's full of all broken down trucks. Right? From the point of view of the owner, it may be that this is my work. This is what I do. I, I you know I. I uh, and so forth. I mean, there, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot. Environmental perception is, um, which was studied by my, one of my mentors, uh, <clears throat> David Lonsall, uh, great, great uh, geographer, is that uh, that's what he was trying to promote, uh, whether he was looking at uh, the British estates or whether he was British or the Appalachian hollers, you know. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Thank you. So we do have two more questions. I know we're at 7.03, but thanks for your patience and thanks for your time. Um, we have a question from Emma Driggers. Are there some other examples outside of New York for comparison of visual impact analysis using landscape artists and art historians as a part in the development and the decision denial for heritage sites protection? So any other examples that kind of um, come to your mind similar to the use of the winter of, of church's winter scene? That I do not know at all. In mm -hmm. fact, <clears throat> most of the uh, <coughs> visual impact analyses and community character uh, ones that I've been done over the last uh, 10 or 20 years that I have, uh, that I know about, um, uh, none of them I used the art. That's why. Mm. Uh, uh, which is somewhat surprising. I mean, to, you know, uh, and of course not everyone, every development issue would have that possibility uh, and so forth. But uh, for example, uh, just one, just to mention the Esopus uh, as a Socrates one, uh, it's still in process, by the way. <laughs> the DC commissioner has not yet ruled on it. Um, because it was, a year or two, a year and a half ago, right? Um, submitted. And uh, it's that the, the town of Saugerties has uh, a Hudson River school type painting in their town hall. I mean, how much, how more powerful mm. would that be to say the importance of, of, of that scene of of the town and the village and the, the dam on, on the uh, Asopus. Now, the Asopus was painted by many, uh, the upper Asopus in particular, uh, Hudson River School of Painters, uh, and uh, who, you know, traveled in the Catskills and, and uh, came across from Hudson and so forth, different to all those folks. But um, uh, this, is, this is even more powerful. Mm -hmm. He's not a great painter, but he is. In, in, the, uh, in, in, in the genre, you might say, of that. So others, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, I, I would hope so. And I would hope that um, those who are digging into that in terms of testimony with respect to a particular proposal, uh, proposed development, would think 
that that might be helpful. Mm -hmm. There are many uh, you know, regional landscape artists all over this country uh, who will have painted the exact <laughs> site of where, you're, where the proposed development is going to be. And uh, uh, it's up to the, um, the, the folks who are writing the testimony for the, uh, those appointments to dig that, dig that out. Hmm. Fascinating. Even more of a reason why this story is so important, if it, if, if it is unique in that way, something to definitely dig into a little bit deeper. Right. And our final question, um, can you comment briefly on the impact of clear water in this work? Any, any thoughts on that? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, um, as, a, as, a, as a member of Clearwater and for decades and decades, and having been on board and all that kind of stuff years ago, I, I'm, you know, and who loves pizza or uh, and Toshi? <laughs> um, <laughs> is that um, <clears throat> Clearwater has been involved in almost all of the particular uh, uh, issues uh, dealing with the Hudson River, and uh, they are their primary interest uh, is of uh, the quality of the Hudson River. And the water, um, so pollution, they, um, you know, uh, all of the different kind of pollution issues that have been there for 30, 40 years that they have done marvelous, incredible, important work. Um, when, it count, when it comes to um, the uh, aesthetic issue, um, uh, they, uh, uh, in, the, in, in two cases that I can speak to, um, one is the uh, the Asopus case, and the other, the Ashokan case, and the other is um, uh, was um, Saint Lawrence and then um, is um, I'm the Green County Mickey to uh, to some degree. I mean, it was, is that um, uh, they were signatory, as I said, they are signatory to the coalition on the Grand County New York Power Plan. Very important to have an existing, not just the citizens coalition that comes together, uh, of, but an existing nonprofit that is noted for its historic work on, with respect to the river. Is that um, the main issue, uh, uh, one of the their primary issues were about the environmental uh, environmental impact of the Green County Nuclear Power Plant, the nuclear power issue, and the drawing of the water, and therefore the heating of the water. This is this is why they were so important, also in Storm King. Now remember, Storm King, uh, Cena Hudson uh, was able to do it, but. Uh, the the Fishermen's Association uh, was crucial in terms of the fish uh, uh, being and the drawback mm -hmm. draw of the fish into the Storm King into the uh, hydro, hydroelectric power plant, and that was also true uh, uh, with respect to Green County Nuclear Power Plant. So they had mm -hmm. a big, they had an important role, very important role, right? And and all of them works together um, and uh, when something kind of tips it over and so happened that happened both in the Storm King case and also in uh, <clears throat> to, some degree, uh, to some degree in the Storm King case and certainly in the Olana case uh, and the Bucha case it was the visual impact assessment but, hmm. uh, um, so, uh, but it, it works on on the foundation of the work that Hudson River, uh, in, uh, the Sloop folks, Hudson River, Sloop Clearwater folks, and others dealing with uh, uh, the chemistry and uh, the atmospheric issues, and and so and the fish in particular on those kinds of issues. Uh, so. Um, 
you know, you, you can't do it alone. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a coalition of, of many parts, some of whom can do this and some can do that. Hopefully you can do this. Absolutely. It's a, it's a story of people. That's what I feel like we always say when we're telling folks about our, our saving Alana story and our view shed preservation story is that it, it takes people. It takes uh, that coalition that you talked about. Um, before we go, I just have one one question. You know, I I was reviewing our framing the view shed conversation that we put on, I think, a little bit over 10 years ago in 2012. And when Aldridge mentioned, you know, saying, staying eternally vi vigilant and having community members stay eternally vigilant, um, when's one of our wonderful board members. And I wanted to just ask you, you know, what's one thing that folks who are tuning in tonight can do to stay vigilant in terms of preserving their own community's character? That's wonderful. And uh, Wint's uh, involvement and in it all for years and years and years has been extraordinary. And he's absolutely right. And speaking both from the state <coughs> point of view and as, uh, as a citizen and as a historian, he, uh, he, he's, very, he's very right on. How about that? Um, how to stay uh, vigilant or about what? Um, <clears throat> it takes time and uh, time, first of all. <laughs> um, for example, um, developments of any kind have to go through a process of permits, either by the local community or uh, in the case of the LWRP, it's, uh, it's the local community, but under the uh, oversight of the Department of State and so forth. Seeker allows you to do that. So what you have to do is you have to stay vigilant about any about any uh, uh, any kind of uh, uh, of uh, development that may be in your neighborhood or one that you're concerned about, um, and that includes. Um, so that includes a little bit of knowledge about Seeker, or at least knowing what, what your local municipal planning department or, uh, or planner, uh, what he or she is uh, willing to kind of work with you about on, on, on Seeker. And, they, and it's, it's, um, it could be on almost anything. Um, <laughs> For example, zoning. Uh, uh, the um, cities, in particular, uh, of uh, Poughkeepsie and Hudson and Kingston and so forth, uh, are uh, constantly rezoning or going through the, the questions of zoning uh, with respect to new new developments. Some want to do something when the zone won't let them, or they are creating new zoning to allow certain kinds of development. And you may say, well, um, you know, our, our community sense of place is that that, that open space, uh, it may be a park already, or it may not be, uh, is, is inviolate. You should not uh, zone that for uh, industrial development or something. That may happen because from the point of view of some who might be writing the map is that it's just an open empty lot mm -hmm. or something or five acres of nothing happening and we need economic development. So, so there are various places where you should be vigilant about, <laughs> you know, it's not fun. It takes time. Sometimes you have to go to Planning board meetings, or you know, other common council meetings, or something like that, and um, so uh, that's not that's not a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Harvey. I mean, this was so, so wonderful and we've received such positive feedback in the in the chat and our Q&A. Um, so we really appreciate your time and you sharing your experiences with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And stay tuned. We'll be sending an email out with some more information, as well as a link to our webinars uh, posting where we'll be posting this webinar once it's archived in our library. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Thank you.